Welcome to the Lion's Roar Dharma Center podcast from Dona Darge Temple. This public talk by Kangsha Rinpoche was recorded during a special event. Welcome to Dona Darge. I'm delighted to reintroduce Rinpoche and uh, I'm delighted he's giving a talk on meditation. The many styles of meditation taught in America today, so there's a lot of uh, confusion about uh, you know, how we should proceed. So I'm looking forward to uh, not only the talk, but the question and answer period. So uh, please, when it's okay to clarify doubts, it's okay to ask questions, it's okay to have a uh, good discussion. I'd like to also invite people, uh, you might as well come up closer, right? If you like, no one's going to move. <laughs> One person is going to be closer. <laughs> okay. So, uh, does everyone have a prayer book? Okay. Uh, today we are having a meditation session. meditation session and uh, first thing is that uh, you have to know the one thing before you start to do the meditation normally normally the meditation I always used to say the meditation is a very simple and a very easy now I have built a monastic institute in Nepal where there is around maybe around the 70 like a 70 kids kids and uh, mostly the kids are some semi orphans and orphans and uh, every morning before they start the class they have to do the meditation around 10 to 15 minutes well some of the, uh, some kids are very small I eat it around eight nine. I'm not so sure that how they do, but I'm sure one thing that at least they are trying. That's <laughs> they are trying. So, so meditation. Always I used to say that meditation is a very simple and a very easy. And uh, one thing you should know that uh, about the meditation. There is a one very. Uh, there is a one very famous saying of the Buddha he's, uh, he's, he said that he said that meditate, meditate while relax relax while meditate so have you heard about the Ananda Ananda was a Buddha's assistant also he was Buddha's cousin after the death of the Buddha what happened is that the Ananda have achieved nothing he have not achieved the realization most of the Buddha students who come after him most of they got the realization they achieved the very high realization state only the Ananda could not so Ananda was so depressed because of he have not achieved the realization so then the he was so depressed and he tried very hard he tried very hard to practice and he tried very hard to meditate to achieve the realization more he go, more he meditate more he gets stressed more he gets stressed he get more depressed because he is forcing himself too much. So now the now at the end what happens he could not meditate at all. So then suddenly he remember the one Buddha's word <coughs> saying meditate while relax. Relax while meditate. That just opened his eye. Then he could meditate very well. Then he achieved the realization. So 
That's a very important point. When you are meditating, when you are meditating, you should not force yourself. You should not force. The more you force, then you cannot meditate at all. Now the second thing is that there is a, in the monastery we have one story. We have the one story and the story goes like that. There is a one student came to the master's place and uh, asked the master to teach him the meditation. So master told him that the meditation is a very simple, very easy. You just go, close your eye, think anything, think anything, whatever you like. But only one thing you should not think, that is monkey. Don't think about a monkey. Other than the monkey, you can think anything. Anything other than monkey. He felt that's very simple, very easy. Then he went to the, his home, then he closed his eye and tried to meditate. Now you will know what comes in his mind. <laughs> so Master told him not to think about a monkey. So that's why the monkey comes in the mind. So the second thing is that in the meditation, you should not reject anything. If you try to reject something, that makes your meditation more difficult. You should not force, you should not reject. No forcing, no rejecting. So that's why the meditation, whatever thoughts comes in your mind, let it come. It will go. It will come and go. It will come and go. More you try to reject, it makes you more difficult to meditate. So that is the second point. Third point, while you are meditating, I'm sure when you are meditate, I'm sure you will get a lot of the distraction. You will get distracted. Could not focus very well. You will get a lot of distraction, I'm sure. So for that, so that what you for that the, what you have to do is that while you are meditating, when you get distracted, lots of things are what happens while we are meditating. That once we get distracted, sometimes we will not aware that we get distracted. We will not be aware that we are get distracted. So that's why awareness. It's a very important awareness. How do you pronounce it? That's a very, a very difficult to pronounce. Awareness, or how do you pronounce it? Huh? Awareness. Yeah. Am I pronouncing? And awareness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> awareness is a very important. So whenever you meditate, one side of the mind, you should be the very cautious that the look that the whether you are getting distracted distracting or not. So that's the third point. Now what will we do is that, okay, now we will meditate together, okay. We'll meditate together and uh, I think you know the focusing on the <coughs> breath, isn't it? You know that, my very simple meditation. We will, what we will do is uh, we will just focus on our breath, okay. Now here that I will ch teach you some tricks. When you are focusing on your breath, when you get distracted, what you have to do is a very simple. When when you are aware that you are get distracted, start to count the breath. Okay, when you are counting the breath, there is a two way of the counting the breath. Inhale or exhale, count one. Inhale or exhale, count two. This is a one way. Other way is inhale or exhale, then count as ten. Inhale or exhale, then nine. Backward, count to backward. Two ways of counting the breath. When you start to count the breath, you will feel that you can focus much better. Inhale or exhale and just focus on your breath. Once you feel you cannot focus on your breath, start to count the breath. Inhale or exhale, count one, up till the 21 or 10, like that. You just start. This is the one thing, okay? When you focusing and when you cannot focus very well. Second thing is that the, when you are meditating, when you are getting the, when you could not focus very well, a lot of the distractions comes into your mind, what you have to do is that you have to look straight into the sky. Straight into the sky, which keep your head position exactly straight, 
just you just you have to look straight into the sky looking up to it straight into the sky that also helps that also frees your thought for the moment you can try that okay and the third thing is that of ancient technique what they use is that when the meditator when they are meditating and uh, when they get a lot of the distraction so they will keep the lamp on the head of the meditator so some of the very ancient painting of the miller river you can see the miller river is of meditating keeping a lamp on the head so i will not suggest that <laughs> that's i think not that good idea <laughs> because i once i tried that but so many years back the lamp fell down <laughs> so <laughs> so because the mainly is that the when meditators when they are keeping the lamp on the head so it is not that easy because the he have to focus and he have to be very cautious and that he have no time to think and the such a things are very unrelated things no so some in the ancient paintings of the miller reba you can see that the keeping uh, miller reba and keeping a lamp on his head even in the his biography he said that the, he meditate 7 days keeping the lamp on his head this is a one ancient technique so they used to do that when the Lord, once uh, some people when they meditate a lot of the distractions comes in mind so that's the things happen so one thing i always feel the very strange that the mindfulness course no i think the mindfulness course is go on and the, the they have to cover a 40 hours or like that but in that courses they never mention about how to overcome the distraction just they mention meditate 40 hours so sometimes i used to make the fun of it them and i'm telling them 40 hours not for meditating 40 hours getting a distraction <laughs> so once you not know the how to overcome the distraction so while you meditate you will get lot of the distraction so that's why if you look at the lama tsongkha but the stages of the path he clearly mentioned that at the section of the shamatha he clearly mentioned to overcome the two things dullness and the excitement or the distraction so to pattern term we call the goba this term in the english there are the different translation that words some translator they translate as the excitement some translator they translate as the distraction but i prefer to say that that distraction distraction okay but i'm not a translator i'm not a professional translator so so anyway so mm, okay so now what will we do i will leave for the few minutes on the what you have to do i i think you all know the sitting position no your back should be upright if you feel the pain you can just don't have to keep the back upright okay okay so hand position like this one you have to touch the two toes each other two toes and uh, <coughs> importance of the touching the two toes is that the, in our body in our body there is a lots of the energy movements there are lots of the energy movements sometimes the energy move very uh, very uh, uh, energy moves in the very right way sometimes the energy m- not moves very well it will get stuck some places so this are touching the two toes to help to move the energy very freely freely in our body okay so before that uh, maybe before that, i might be jumping out of the topic i just want to show you the one small thing just just take it as a game okay very small game okay just take it as a game okay just what you have to do is uh, just press the center of the two palm okay that is uh, what we call try to feel the energy okay because the what energy i'm talking is uh, not the energy what the science of thoughts okay that's how it that's what we call the inner energy okay little bit different okay inner energy inner energy okay just press the center of the palm three times and the left palm three times okay three times and the you put your palms that bring together but don't touch your two palms okay try to feel something 
between your two palms. Like this one. Can you feel something the between can you feel something like a pushing sensation or pushing or pulling back sensation? Can you feel some force? Hmm? Pulling or pushing sensation or some like a cool sensation to have it. Hmm? Can you feel that? Hmm? Warm. Okay, can you feel that? Yeah, warm. Or can you feel like a pulling and pushing sense? Can you feel that some sorts of like sensation of pulling and the pushing? Hmm? Huh? And can you can you raise your arm who feels that? Okay. Can you raise your arm who have feel nothing? Okay. I was also like that before. <laughs> I didn't feel anything before. Okay. So you can feel that, no? So now they hear that the one we have to know that the inner the energy. That the inner energy in the what we are saying that inner energy thing is that the sometimes that we observe that energy from outside also sometimes that the we can transfer that energy to the others. So that's why the when you pray for the other, when you pray for the other. Not only the praying, so sometimes you can transfer the, your positive energy, positive energy to the others. So that's why, have you seen the, some Buddha's, like a posture, like this way, Buddha's posture, no? some Buddha's posture, like this way. So that's why saying that the, he are transferring the energy from the palm. Now, I think that is in the last year, last year. I was giving a talk in the one Catholic high school in the Portland, so I introduced at that. And uh, that time, it's a most, uh, I mean, the high school kids. So I just asked them, now not only to feel your energy, just try to feel the energy of the person who are sitting next to you. So you can try later to the, with the others, try not with the, your palm, just try to feel the other's energy. Not to, you, when you try to feel the other's energy, you should not touch either. Just try to come near by the other's hand and try to feel that, whether you can feel the same thing, that pulling and pushing sensation or the warm or cool. The one thing is a very interesting thing is that the, what you feel now and the after the meditation, what you feel is, it won't be the same. I have experience with the not only one person, so many people in the different places. Before the meditation, after the meditation, the sensation what you are feeling will be totally it will be changed. Okay, now you can see that. Okay, what you feel now and after the meditation. Okay, you just check that. Okay, it won't be the same. Okay, now what we'll do is meditation. Okay, then now I will leave for the few minutes. That's the what you have to do is inhale or exhale the breath. Inhale, exhale the breath, and the focus on your breath. Okay, once you cannot focus when you are getting that, when you when you distracted, when you get distracted, what you have to do is a count the breath, okay? Inhale or exhale, count one. In case the monkey comes in your mind, <laughs> don't reject, okay? <laughs> then focus on the monkey, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, then I will leave for the few minutes, okay?
Okay. Now, now again the press the your palm three times. Right and left both. Then now try to feel the force between your two hands. What the difference? Can you feel? Hmm? What do you feel? Sorry. More stronger, isn't it? Yeah. This is the one thing. So the the meditation, when you do the meditation, when you focus on the meditation, it also increases a lot of the positive energy, inner energy, positive energy in our body. The first thing. The second thing is that, have you heard aura, no? Have you heard the aura, no? So in the meditation also it helps to increase the, our aura. Aura is a, some like a, our the inner the stand or the, it is some sorts of like a energy body or it's the stand of the, our energy. It will increase that uh, uh, our aura or energy. So have you seen the aura? Hmm? Have you seen? Hmm? Yeah. Have you seen the aura now? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes or no? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Okay. Photograph. Oh no 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 not in photograph. Okay. <laughs> Real. Okay. Yeah. In the photograph I'm sure you can see. In the photograph, if you type uh, aura in the Google and the search, then you will see the <laughs> Okay, I'm not that one, okay. I'm, okay, I need a one volunteer, okay. Okay, can you, okay. I'm not so sure this time you can see. Okay, can you just stand on that wall side? Just on this side, maybe. Mm, not that side, maybe. Yeah, this side. Little bit. Can you just stand up? Yeah. Can you move, with the, and the, can you move the chair? Can you move the chair and the other? Yeah. Okay, I'm not. Okay, just stand there, okay? Just stand there. Okay, now can you just focus on just six inch top of the his head, okay? Just focus on, don't focus on the, his forehead. Just six, around six inch above of the his head focus on that okay focus that point when you are focusing sight of the eye can you see the some of the whitish rays surrounding him can you see can you raise your arm who can see yeah can you see that okay now i want to know that the uh, house his that whitish ray looks like very bright or less bright or Hmm? Okay, now mark that. Okay, can you see that? No? Okay. Okay, now can you sit down? Thank you. Now I need uh, one other volunteer. Okay. Yeah, same. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now can you focus the same point? As now can you see that white tissue ray? Hmm? Can you raise your arm? Who can see? Okay. Now I have a one question. Which white is which? I mean, the first one or second one? For oh, yeah, the ray is a bigger. Which ray is a bigger? The first one or second one? Are you sure? Okay. That means okay. He's the ray is a bigger, isn't it? Okay, that's sure. Because this is sometimes the aura will change, okay? Might be right now that his positive energy is stronger right now. Maybe tomorrow, maybe he might change that. Okay, thank you, no? Okay. So, now the thing is that if you try and the, if you meditate, 
maybe 15 to 20 minutes and you check the aura, the size will be different. Before meditation, if you check the size of aura, okay, now you can sit down. <laughs> okay, before and after the aura, that will change. That it will change. And also, the one very interesting thing about the dead ray is that the, you can look at the shape of the dead ray. The shape should be exactly the same for the right and the left. The shape should be the same. Is there any difference of the size of the shape? Hmm? Yeah, top will be bigger and the right and left side. I think its shape looks like that. No? But if the shape, any difference between the right and left side, that means a little bit of energy imbalance in our body. So, have you seen that the, sometimes the Buddha's picture, you can see the rays, no? Legendary story says the Buddhas have that aura or a light, three feet. I think we have, I think maybe hardly we have a six inch or eight inch like that. So, Buddha used to have it that light, I don't know, the three feet. So, so now, now point, my point is that uh, while you are meditating, that uh, you can just bring the more positive energy in the body. The second step in the meditation is not only that, you can transfer the positive energy to the others. You can transfer it. You can transfer it. So, you can transfer and you can do the experiment. What you can do the experiment is the, like a flower. You can just keep the two flower in your house and the one you just transfer the positive energy to the flower. One flower don't transfer the, any positive energy then you can see after the one week what makes the difference to the flower. You can do the experiment there. Okay? So, now the, okay. Now the, what will we do is, okay, now, now we'll have the second meditation is a very simple, you just visualize the light, okay? White light, okay? White light, light just, in the, how do we have to see, I have to translate from Tibetan term. Tibetan term, it says that Vujji Thigli. Vujji Thigli means it's some sorts of like a light circle. Drop. Drop. Yeah, light drop. Does it make any sense? Yeah, actually, that if you translate it very literally, yeah, it should be the drop. Yeah, light drop. So, does it make any sense? Hmm? Okay, so light drop is some that just like a visualize the one, like a circle of the light or hmm? dot, light dot. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, here. Exactly here. Okay. That is a point. I think you have heard about the third eye, no? Yeah, so you can just exactly this point, okay? Light, okay? Light like a whitish light, okay? Sometimes you might feel a little bit difficult when you are very strong white light on your forehead. So when you feel the difficult, what you have to do, you should not force. You should not relax. You should not reject. Relax. Okay? That's what I mentioned before. Okay, what, whenever you do the meditation, when you find difficult, don't force, don't reject anything. Okay? These two rules are very important for whenever you do meditation. Okay? These two rules. Okay? Clear, no? Okay, so we'll leave for the few minutes, okay? Meditating the, yeah, light drop. Okay, light drop. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Thank you. So now, now, now I will leave for the ten fifteen minutes for the question answer session. I will stop the here meditation session here, and I will leave ten fifteen minutes for the question answer session. If you have any question. Uh, my question was, when we're working in meditation and trauma comes up rapidly, uh, how do we try not to automatically, as the first resp reject, when we weren't expecting it? Okay. So, when the trauma comes up, two things uh, you have to do. One thing is that you have to accept, accept it, accept it. Accept that and the first thing. Second thing is that uh, when the trauma comes, you should accept it. And the second thing is uh, you should think that it's not only you, it's not only for you. Because the normally the trauma comes in the people's mind because when they could not accept it. Because the one question comes, one example, something bad thing happens to you. Anyone, something bad thing happens to anyone. First thing is the one question will come in their mind. Why me? Why me? It always comes. When something bad things happens to you, you will ask yourself, why me? But, in case, if you win a hundred million dollar super lottery, you will never ask the why me. <laughs> never ask that. When the bad thing comes, only you will ask the why me. So that's why, the, that's why the, what we are saying is that what thing happens, some bad things happen, we should know that not, we are not, it's not only us. Lots of people have been through the, like the same, like that, difficulties. They, they, in the Buddha's time, there one mother came, I think you have heard that story, that the mother came to the Buddha's place and asked that the horse, horse son was just died and asked the Buddha, raise the son, bring the son back from that. Have you heard that story? Huh? Okay. So then the he, Buddha told that I just go and I find the, some the some the some I mean the I don't know how to say that in English ash no when you burn the uh, when you burn the fire they will get the ash so Buddha asked the, get me the ash from the house where they have no one have died so that mother could not find that place so Buddha told that that is not only comes to your son it comes to everyone so same thing this is the one thing that something what the bad thing happens so sometimes we could not accept it. So that's why the, it, it's, it's become the trauma and the, it makes us, it hurt us quite a lot. And the second thing is not only the accepting, you have to, you have to know that that not only comes to you, it comes to everyone. Because if you look at the lot of the, I mean, the, I mean the, in the life, there are the, lot of the things happens in our life, good things and bad things, all oh, comes, no? It is the, and the, for me, it's a very helpful that something bad things happens, I always, Think that the one thing that the, this is samsara. Have you heard the samsara? Samsara means uh, samsara means a place that in this world we cannot find something very perfect. Wherever you go, you won't find any perfect. So life is not a mathematics. In the mathematics, you might find uh, some perfect answer. No, in the life, sometimes you cannot find the perfect answer. So this is some. There will be something wrong. Also, there will be something right. So that's the thing. So that's why the, when the trauma comes while you're meditating, just accept it. Okay, it's a fine. When you accept it, then it makes it very easy. So once you cannot accept the thing, then it makes it very difficult for you. So that's why, that's why very simple thing. I will tell you the one very simple thing. When something happens, something happens in your life, once you cannot accept it, that will take your anger. Something happens surrounding to you, and once you cannot accept it, that trigger your anger. Once you can accept it, then it's called the patient. Patient and the anger is a different thing. The thing is, the pay, be, difference between the anger and the patient is the ones the things that what you do not like. Once you can accept it, that's called the patient. When your loved one not nearby you, 
when your loved one is very far away, when you cannot accept that the distance between you and your loved one, what do you call that? Then you will say, oh, I miss you. When you can accept that the distance, what do you call? Then you will say, I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking of you. So there are a lot of things that are like that. So that's why the acceptance. So accept it. So it might be a little bit difficult. I know that it's very difficult. So difficult, but you can learn it. Because one time I was giving a talk in the one corporate bank. So one lady, I, I told her, you have to accept that. One lady told me that the, whenever she comes to the office, she always get worried that the or child might get accident when they are dropping to the school, no? When her driver. So then she asked me, she really have to accept the results, whatever happens for the child. <laughs> so sometimes the accepting also sometimes are difficult. Accept is difficult. But the once you can accept it, then you will then the ninety percent of the your anxiety will go away. Right now, the 90% of the, your anxiety is not going You cannot accept that. You always accept the, only the good things. You never expect the something unexpected things. You should learn to expect that some ex unexpected things comes in your life. So that's why, so that's why. But when you, when you accept, when you try to accept it, accept, then it will become very easy. Accept means mentally, okay? Mentally accepting, okay? Mentally you have to accept, okay, I will accept it. Then everything will then the you, then the everything will become everything will turn into the into the very i mean the good way everything will turn into a very good way okay <laughs> hmm. thank you so much Rinpoche, for mm -hmm. the wonderful teachings over the past 3 days um i'm wondering if there's any difference uh, for meditation instruction for children or teenagers, and secondly, any recommendations for how to encourage them mm -hmm. to meditate? Okay, the children's that uh, I think the children's of meditation in the my monastic institute in Nepal, the children they are just meditating, just very simple meditation. Just I ask the children to just focus on their breath. Just focusing on the breath, 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, focusing on the breath. Inhale or exhale, the focus on breath. Children, I find that that's a very important for the children to the meditation. Because uh, right now, the, what we are living, the, some, I mean, the sanctuary or the time, a lot of the distractions, no? a lot of the getting distractions because of the internet and the televisions and a lot of the distraction. So that's why the whole that our mind, that special, the children's and all our minds are occupied with a lot of the, I mean, the things, a lot of the things where our mind is occupied and so we cannot focus very well, number one. Number two is that the why the meditation is important right now, the, because of the using the lot of the gadgets like uh, internet, uh, the lots of the things when we are using it, so sometimes it's, uh, it damaged the relation between the human to human, the relation is a really very much, really a lot, it damaged a lot. Because I have a one experience, because I have a one experience that the one time I was in Taiwan and uh, someone invited me in the restaurant. I was in the restaurant. It's restaurant is quite full. So I told, wow, how come it's so full? It, today is not a Saturday and Sunday. So they told me today is uh, the Chinese Valentine Day. So Chinese Valentine Day, so it's a full. So I just looked at a lot of the couple sitting around. So most of the couple, so they are just busy with their own cell phone. No? They are writing something. Only one couple talking each other. So I told them that who are talking each other couple, maybe they just met very newly. <laughs> New couple. <laughs> Once they get little old, then they will start and use themselves. <laughs> because this is the one thing the damage of the human to human relation get damaged. Number one. Number two is that uh, what is happening is that a very simple way that uh, what is happening in the, our life is that it's uh, uh, when you're carrying, I mean, the, when you're carrying the back in your right hand, okay? Back in your right hand. Once you get pain in your hand, what will you do? Hmm? You will, yeah, you will change though, other side. You will change. Then once that get pain, you will change for the other side. That's the what we're doing, no? That's the in our life. That solution we are using all the time. When you are not happy with the one car, 
you will change. When you are not happy with one cell phone, you will change. Now that solution, what is when you are not happy with the, that man, you will change the man. When you are not happy with that wife, you will change for another one. That is what we are doing. That is the one, but the, we are not knowing that that is a not a right solution. So that is a not a right solution. We can fix. We can a lot of things. We can fix. We are not trying to fix it. We are just trying to change and change. That is the one mistake we are make, making. So that why we are changing so much is that we don't know how to fix that. So that's why we are changing it. So that's why the why we cannot fix it because the relation between human to human to relation is a very much damaged. Mainly because of the, we are not talking each other. We don't talk to each other that much. So more you talk, then more you will understand. More you will understand, then the relation will be much healthier. That happens. Some, the very lack of talking. Because I've been to the one of the kid detention center. So I met the many kids who got in. So I asked them how they got got in. But some kids they are not very open but mo most of kids they told me the one thing because of the home in the home they don't feel happy lots of arguments not feel the homely feeling they don't have it home so they just went out when they went out to street they met a lot of bad friends so that's why they got in the kid detention center so that's why the, that's why the what i'm saying is that why so so that's why the what i feel is that why that that's why sometimes that the when you get thing because the now the we are very much get addicted addict with you know the addiction of the alcohol addiction of the cocaine but i used to say the addiction of the internet that is the more worst you are using the internet more than you have to you are watching the television more than you have to so that's why i proudly say the one thing in the my monastery in the monastery in the institute in nepal two special thing First special is that in my monastic institute there is a Buddhist relic in my monastery. The Buddhist relic is there, Buddhist relic, Jinan relic, <laughs> donated from Sri Lanka president office. Okay, anyway, this is one thing. Second thing is a very special thing is in my monastery. It's just in the in the small mountain, but it's in the city. But the second special is that I used to tell in my monastery you won't get the mobile signal. <laughs> So you have to talk each other. <laughs> you have to talk human to human. No. Okay, you're gonna use the internet. <laughs> so really, that's I'm very happy. So that's why the kids. So once they have get the call from the, their parents, they have to get come to the office and they can receive the call. So they cannot use the too much of the internet or like internet. So that's the thing is sometimes. So that's why the human to human relations so it's a damage with a lot of the, i mean the because of the addiction i used to I, I will tell addiction of the internet to get rid of the that internet a, addiction of the internet the meditation and your focus and meditate that will help to reduce that addiction yeah okay <laughs> yeah hmm? yeah Thank you, Rinpoche. Uh, in his text, uh, Calming the Mind, uh, Genlam Rinpa says uh, that visualizing Manjushri is uh, beneficial for developing stability in shamatha. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be able to um, give uh, more examples on how that works or uh, the benefit of visualizing Manjushri during shamatha? Okay. In the shamatha, not only the visualizing the Manjushri, any Buddha, the visualizing the any Buddha that will be the helpful. In the shamatha is a such a state that the way you can focus very well without the distraction and the without the dullness, the focusing very well. That's uh, important. So that's why the that's why when you are focusing on the Manjushri Buddha, most important thing is uh, you have to focus. You should not get distracted. So focusing on the Manjushri Buddha. And the second thing is that uh, when you focus on the Manjushri Buddha, also you will receive a lot of blessings from the Manjushri Buddha. The blessing is, uh, you can think like some positive energy from the Manjushri Buddha, so that you can receive. So that's why it helps you to, more you get the more blessings and more positive energy, so that helps you to uh, achieve the shamatha much easier. When you just focus on the, like a table or apple or chair, you will not receive any blessing from them. You will not receive any positive energy from these, I mean, the things. But when you visualize and focus on the Manjushri Buddha, 
you can receive the blessings. So that's why it makes the difference. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll leave for the one last question then also. Yeah. Um, so when I'm meditating, sometimes I'm aware of the breath and then I completely forget the breath and I'm off thinking about something and that's clear, the difference. But sometimes I'm aware of the breath and I also have thoughts, like comments, little things going on at the same time. And I'm not really lost of the breath. I still am aware of the breath, but I'm also aware of the thoughts. Is Over time, does that become different? Does it... Do you have less thoughts, or you just become better at at maintaining your awareness while other things are happening around you that you're also aware of? I, I, that's kind of my question. Okay. Now, in the that's we call that uh, there are the two type of the distraction. One we call the gross label. One is a subtle label. So that is a subtle level of the distraction or a subtle level of the excitement. One side of the mind you can focus, one side of the mind you can hear the people talking, you can smell the things. Yeah, that is what we call the subtle distraction. For beginner label, you can keep on that. Now when you become the more and more serious about the meditation, then you have to get rid of that distraction. You have to get rid of that distraction. So, get rid of that distra uh, distraction because that we call the subtle distraction. Once you cannot get rid of the subtle distraction like that kind, you cannot achieve the shamatha, state of the shamatha. The sh normally, the state of the shamatha you can achieve within a six months if you're very serious practicing. When I was age of 18 or 19, I met a one master who was quite famous at that time. He was from the Gandhian monastery. There is one monastery, okay, Gandhian monastery. And he was quite old. He was quite old and uh, then I asked him that about uh, his meditation. He spent uh, more than 20 or 30 years in the jungle in the northeast of India. 30 years jungle. So I asked him. So he told me he achieved in the six months. Then I asked him, the, how do you feel when you reach the, that state? He, I, she shared the experience that the, when he achieved the shamatha meditation, he feels that his body is very like, feel like a very light. He felt that, he felt that the, he can jump from the one place to another, one tree for another, he feels very light. But I'm sure he cannot jump, he's old monk. Definitely, <laughs> if he jump, he will break the, his leg. <laughs> That's the, his feeling, the first time. Then he told the one thing, that after he got that feeling, that sensation of that feeling, it didn't remain too long. It's, it's just something like a, comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. So that is a some, that's a something, the shamatha state is some state that the way when you achieve that, we call that very, I don't know how to translate that into the, we call the Xinjiang Dewa, or the desert, one kind of the joy, one kind of joy. I don't know how to translate that in the Tibetan term into the English. Uh, so anyway, so the thing is that when you reach that state of the shamatha, you will have a very, very strong, Bodies or very some sorts of very strong joy comes. That joy is mainly the because of your sensation, your feeling that you will feel that the body is very light. Because, because that the shamatha is a such a state that when you are focused too much on the one point, one point, and when you are focusing too much on the one point, and when you get rid of that this excitement, and the get rid of the dullness, all these parts. I mean, the, all these parts. Then you start to feel your body is very different, very light. So, yeah, so that's the thing. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been a Lions Roar Dharma Center recording. For more information, visit Lions